absolutely delighted to, uh, to be here because one, you are one fine looking crowd. I mean, I gotta tell you, you're just gorgeous. So, big hand of applause for supporting this incredible cause. And secondly, celebrating this incredible milestone of 10 years. I mean, I cannot tell you how remarkable that is in the world of men's health. Because guys, let's face it, when it comes to health, we're idiots, right? The women know, the women in this audience know, and the guys, you know, we know at the back of our heads, but we don't like to admit it. We don't want to go to the doctor. We don't want to talk about health, and health below the waist, whoa! If we ain't bragging, we ain't talking about it. So it is incredible when you have a leader like Dr. Winston Isaac and the team around him that for 10 years are doing things that men are uncomfortable doing, which is talking about their health and encouraging men to take care of their health. That's worth celebrating. I also want a big shout out to another Winston, and I don't know what this is about Winston and being an inspiring leader in the area of men's health, but we're also joined tonight by my dear friend Winston Kloss, who's the past president and chair of the Toronto section of Prostate Cancer Canada Network. A big shout out to my friend. Why is it so remarkable? How many people in this room have ever bought a lottery ticket? How many? Come on, show of hands. Whoever doesn't have their hand up is lying. Okay? Because when the totals get up to 30, 40, 50 million dollars, Canadians go nuts. Right? Like we are lined up around the block. We're buying multiple tickets. Our brain is telling us there is no chance, right? It's millions to one against from winning the lottery. I have more chance of becoming the next Pope than I have of winning Lotto 649. But there's a part of your brain that says, whoa, 30, 40, 50 million dollars. I, I could be taking the private jet with Winston down to St. Kitts and living the island life, right? Somebody's got to win. Why not me? Right? So we put our money down. But you tell the average guy, one out of seven Canadian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. And the guy will immediately tell you, not me, man. <laughs> Somebody else ain't gonna be me, cause I am strong like bull. Right? Millions to one against. Hey, somebody's got to win, why not me? One in seven could not possibly be me. And here's the dirty little secret. Prostate cancer is a racist disease, okay? It's got you right in the crosshairs because one in seven is the average guy. But if you're of Afro-Caribbean heritage, if you trace your heritage back to West Africa, you're at far greater risk than Caucasians or Asians. And if it's in your family, you're probably one in four. So let me tell you, we need to be buying fewer lottery tickets and getting more testing. I know, I know how hard this is for guys. I lost my uncle 22 years ago to prostate cancer. He was 53 years old. So young. So young. 
And in our family we say, biologically we lost Uncle Ralph to prostate cancer. But in reality, I lost my uncle to machismo. Because he was a classic Italian macho man. Right? Oh, hey! If I ain't bleeding from the ears, I don't need no stinking doctor. You got pains, boy? Walk it off. Don't be a sissy. Man up. Until the pain was so great that even my Uncle Ralph had to go to a doctor. And by that time, by that time, the prostate cancer had metastasized outside the gland into bones, into other organs. The doctor didn't know how he walked into the room. Right? The pain must have been extraordinary. And we got to watch him die for six months. You don't want to wish that on your worst enemy. And why should we? It's a simple blood test. Okay, I know guys freak because anytime we're talking about prostate cancer, the assumption is it's the bend over and cough test, all right? I, how many George Carlin fans in the audience? Right, everybody loves George. And George had that fabulous routine he used to have, the seven words you can't say on radio and television. Now sadly, all seven of those words are now heard on radio and television on a regular basis. But there are three words that even George Carlin did not have the kahunas to say. Those three words, digital rectal exam, the three words most likely to put a man into the fetal position, which is fantastic because that is the best position from which to administer the test. It is a good compendium to the PSA, to the blood test. But really the blood test is the best we have at the moment. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. And unfortunately, in that imperfection has been the cause for governments getting off the hook for paying for the test. Ontario and BC still do not pay for the PSA test, right? In your program, you turn to page 18. Turn, it, turn to page 18 right now. Because in that program is reproduced the first newsletter from the Walnut Foundation. And it says on page 18 in the reproduction, news flash, PSA test will be paid for by OHIP starting in 2009. We are still waiting, okay? We need to be talking to our politicians about this because it's 30 to 50 bucks. It is one of the cheapest tests to save a man's life available anywhere. Now, do you think for one minute if the government said we're not going to pay for mammogram, which is a much more expensive test, no government would dream of doing that because they know ladies got it going on. And if they were to do that, every lady in this room and every room like it across the country would be marching down to Queen's Park and saying, what up? Like, we're talking about saving lives. But guys here, hey, it's not a perfect test. The government doesn't pay for it. The instant guy reaction is not, I'm pissed, I'm going out of Queen's Park and I'm gonna burn me a politician. No, a guy says, well, hey, I guess that means it's not necessary. Because if it were important, if it could actually save my life, surely to God, the government would pay for it and wouldn't make me go into my pocket for 30 to 50 bucks. But they don't. Ontario and BC, the last two.
We've got to change that. Since the PSA test has been introduced some 25 years ago, mortality from prostate cancer has declined by over 40%. Now, not all of that is due to early detection, but here are the facts. You get to prostate cancer while it's still in the prostate gland, and your chance of survival is over 95%. It goes outside the prostate gland into your bones, into your lymph nodes, into other organs, and your chance of survival, and I don't care how good a hospital or how great a surgeon or radiologist you get, your chance of survival drops to below 25%. That's the fact. Early detection is critical. And it's particularly critical in this community that's at much higher risk than the average community for prostate cancer. That's why we need you to man up. Because manning up is not saying, I'm immortal, I'm Superman. Manning up is taking care of your health so you can take care of the people who are counting on you in your life. And I know, because I've seen it in my family, it is the women in our lives, it is the significant others in our lives that push guys to do the right thing. We need to do that. And the amazing thing when it comes to prostate cancer is there's real progress. Like I hear a lot, and I know that there's some in the back of your mind who's saying, Rocco, come on. Years of walk runs and dinners and donations of this, that, and the other thing, billions of dollars, and there's still people with cancer. There's still people dying of cancer. What's up with that? Like, is it all some kind of scam? In the last 20 years, again, mortality rates from prostate cancer have declined by over 40%. 4,100 men will still die in Canada of prostate cancer this year, tragically. Virtually the same number as women who will die of breast cancer this year because the numbers are virtually identical. One in seven Canadian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in eight Canadian women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. And the age distribution of those two groups is virtually the same. But we've made that difference. 4,100, yes, will still die, but at 40% reduction, what does that mean? It means that if we had the mortality rates of just 20 years ago, that death rate would be over 6,500. Almost 2,500 fathers, brothers, sons, uncles, neighbors, pastors, co-workers are alive this year, next year, and the year after that wouldn't have been just 20 years ago. And that's because of generous people like you supporting organizations like the Walnut Foundation, supporting great research, like the work that we're doing at Prostate Cancer Canada, and men getting their act together and going out and getting early detection. It doesn't mean that suddenly surgery or radiation is going to follow immediately after. There is active surveillance, there is differences, but you've got to give yourself the chance. You know, guys say, well, dude, I'm, I'm worried more about the potential side effects than I am with prostate cancer. I don't want to live with incontinence or sexual dysfunction, right? Which is a risk, particularly if you wait until later to deal with the disease. But I've got an important message for each and every one of you. For every man 
and every woman who loves the men in their lives. The single worst cause of erectile dysfunction is death. <laughs> there ain't no blue pill after that. We keep you alive, you got options, brother. You've got to take care of your health. It's critical, and there has been such incredible progress. Not just that mortality is down 40%, but the quality of life and the treatments. 25 years ago, radiation meant broad beam external radiation, which fried everything and led to more chance of other kinds of cancers down the road. Now they can plant seeds, radioactive seeds, right by the tumor and limit the side effects. Surgery has become so much more precise. The drugs available so much more customized. Please, if there is no other message that goes out, starting at age 40, please get a PSA baseline test. Simple thing, it's better than a lottery ticket, and it will save your life and the lives of those around you. God bless you all, continue to great work.